Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at the very entry level of automatic watches and a lot of you guys who are beginning in this hobby might be wondering what is the best option for under 100 or even, even better under 75 dollars and that question used to be a simple question to answer that would be of course the entry level automatic Seiko the Seiko SNK 809 that I have here and this is a wonderful watch it is a very it is a classic watch that comes in a different array of colors you've got a blue version a black version a green version a papyrus color version let's say and this watch used to be the answer for that this is was the best watch for under $100 but lately you have all these watches coming from China that have actually better specifications than this one with sapphire crystals, with, uh, with the uh, forearm movement which is hacking and hand winding so that question, so the question now is more is this still the best automatic watch you can get for under $75? and we are going to be looking at the specifications of this watch and comparing it with the new watches coming from China and we're going to see if the Seiko, if the little Seiko 5 military can still compete in that range. So let's get right into it. So the SNK 809, first the dimensions. This watch is a small watch, even too small according to some of its critics, and the diameter is a very mid-century 37 millimeters. The thickness is just 10.5 millimeters. The lug to lug is 42 millimeters, making it very wearable for any wrist size, and the lug width is 18 millimeters. So very nice and traditional size. The, the dial is of a Flieger type, of a fl of a B Flieger type, with an inner ring with the hours and an outer ring with the minutes. And as you can see, I have the green version here green being the color of 2020 and if we continue with the dial you can see that in the upper part of the dial we have the Seiko logo and the five shield which are applied which is a very nice touch for a watch in this price range at three o'clock we have a dates and day that dial is protected by a piece of hardlex crystal which is mineral crystal, which is a bit hardened. It's not much, but it will be a bit better than other plastic and mineral crystals that were used before. And I have, I have had many, many watches with these Hardlex crystals, and I can say that never has it happened to me to break one or to scratch one a lot. So I can't say bad things about this crystal. And at the price range, it is perfectly acceptable. And the hands of this watch are, according to me, very handsome sword hands. The hour hand is very similar in shape to the minute hand. Just the hour hand lines perfectly with those hour numerals. And the minute hand lines also very well with those minute numerals. Only the uh, second hand with its red tip could be a little bit longer to lie directly with the second indices and the case as you can see is fully bead blasted there is no brushing here anywhere the only part in which this watch is brushed is on the back in all the parts surrounding that see-through back and as we are here let's talk about the movement and this as you can read there is the Ubiquitous 7S26 and even though this movement is nothing to write home about it's a pretty standard non-decorated movement but in any case for people who are beginning the hobby you can see that it's very nice because you can see that movement working there and let's not forget to say that that 7S26 movement is according to me the weakest link of this watch because this movement is non-hacking and non-hand winding, which means that if you wear this watch, you cannot hack, which means that if you pull the crown 
here, the, seconds, the second hand will not stop. And the second negative of this movement is that if you turn the crown, it doesn't wind the movement. And you have to do the classic Seiko shuffle, which means that you have to move the watch if you ever want to wind it. If you're wearing this watch, this is your only watch, and you're only wearing this watch, that is no problem, because with the movement of your arm every day, it will charge itself. As you get a larger collection of watches, that lack of hand winding will very soon be a nuisance. And as you can see, the watch is only water resistant, which means that it's resistant to 3 bar, or 30 meters. And in practical terms, that means that it's only splash proof. I wouldn't be diving into the pool or in the bathtub with this one. But it's okay for washing your hands and for doing the dishes and that sort of thing. A bit of, and let's talk a bit about the history of the Seiko 5. And the Seiko 5 line was released in the late 1960s by Seiko. And its aim was to bring new people into automatic watches. The 5 stands for 5 principles that were applied to these watches. And very basically they meant that they had to be water resistant. They had to have, they had to be tough. They had to have a day-date complication. They had to have a hidden crown, a protect crown, which is the case here. And they had to be automatic movements. And even though those principles have varied, during the long, illustrious line of the Seiko 5, you can see that this watch still has, still follows those main principles established all those decades ago. And this watch has a fair amount of loom, which is pretty incredible for the price. Seikos are known for having great loom, so let's see if this entry-level Seiko is no exception. As you can see, that loom is very potent and will be more than enough for anyone. The only bad thing about this loom is that there is no indication of where it's 12. I think they just could have put a, a double pip at the 12 just to indicate where that is. But otherwise, it's an impressively good loom for this price range. So as you can see, this movement is no price, with plus 16 and a pretty high bit error on the dial up position. So at the 3 up position, we get a much better rate, but a higher bit error. At the dial down position, the rate goes way up again, and at the 9 up position, this watch gets a much better accuracy rate. So as you can see the accuracy is nothing to write home about, but all in all not too bad if you consider the price of this watch. It is important for the for measuring the accuracy with a time grapher to measure as many positions as possible, because especially in this on these cheaper movements, if you can get very good measurements on let's say dial up, and you can get awful measurements on another position. So so we have seen the historic champion of this price range. Now let's take a look at the competition. Enter the first competitor. And this is the Bear Cigar Submariner Hulk. So this is a 43mm across, 13mm in height, and a whopping 51mm log to log. And it does have a sapphire crystal, and a ceramic bezel insert and the Seiko NH35 hacking and hand winding movement. Let's check that hacking. And as you can see, hacks and it hand winds. This, of course, beats in specs the little Seiko. But look at it. It's a behemoth. Compare it with the little Seiko 5. And it's David and Goliath. So the Seiko's best defense here is its traditional size, I would say. Next competitor, the Carison C1032. 
and this is a dress watch and it's a 40 millimeters across 12 millimeters thick this one has a sapphire glass a Seiko NH36 movement so hacking and hand winding and it's waterproof to 50 meters so here again even though this is not the same kind of watch we see the same pattern here so, much so as for the question we were wondering can the little Seiko 5 still compete? And let's be honest, spec for spec, it cannot anymore. You're talking about watches that cost the same, but that have sapphire crystals, the 4R hacking and hand winding movement, and uh, even sometimes ceramic bezels, so of course it cannot compete spec for spec. But when talking watches, especially, especially automatic watches, you're not only talking specs, you're also talking brand heritage, and you're talking about all these things. If you were only wondering about specs and the best timekeeper, you would only go, you would of course first go to your cell phone, which is always on time, always right. But it's not about that. It's not only about having the best spec, spec watch. It's also about having tradition, about keeping a tradition of automatic watches alive. And in this world of tradition, brand name and brand heritage means a lot. Look at the Swiss companies selling their watches for thousands of dollars, basing themselves only on heritage and prestige. But Seiko is doing the same at a very affordable price with a heritage that is as good as any other, as any Swiss company. And unfortunately, that is not going to last. With, with Seiko reviewing their pricing, my bet is that these little Seiko 5 for under a hundred dollars are going to go extinct. Uh, Seiko showed that by releasing the 5KX last year, which started at about $250. So that is a lot of money for these kind of watches. And there's another aspect as well. These watches coming from China are humongous. They're 44, 43 uh, millimeters across. And they're very hard to wear for small wristed people, like myself, for example. And this little watch is only 37 millimeters across, and that makes it much more compatible. So even though it might not be as well specced, I think it is much more well proportioned than, uh, than the other watches coming from China. So thank you very much for having watched. Stay safe and stay healthy. Goodbye.